Hey. Fifty years ago, we produced the moon landing hoax. The trailer blaze filled with science fiction. Fold us all with the impossible. Today, the crowds we exploit are even greater. To lie farther, we must be able to sustain fictions of greater distance and duration. Your minds are the resources we harvest with our machinations. We pretend to overcome radiation, isolation, gravity and extreme environments as we've always done. That's the video game we created to bind the minds of humanity. We're producing another moon hoax, a play by 2024. And this is how. We want to believe we have the ability to get larger, heavier payloads of planets beyond Earth's gravity. For this, we simulate an entirely new rocket, space life system. SLS be the most wasteful rocket ever developed. And with our CGI production. And more enticing, this game system makes you think we can fly deep space missions. We feed you lies in capsules for you to believe our game, from wasteful launches to CGI fake space and the good old parachute trick. For this trick, we built Orion. This is NASA's next generation human space fiction. Inventing fake data and maps from lunar orbiters, our programmers create many moon hazards and resources. We're currently producing an entirely new hoax to landing and operating on the moon. Funding our commercial partners with your money to make up science instruments and robotic props, you are paying our way for human fictions in 2024. Our task is to hoax quickly and to keep it going, to cash our production efforts with a fervor that can convince the weak that we return to the moon in a manner that is wholly different than 50 years ago. With our simulated reusable lunar landers, we pretend to land anywhere on our CGI lunar surface map. To sustain this fiction, we give him a platform in orbit around the moon from which to transition. A canister-shaped platform to fake deep space experiments and be a mental dead zone for non-thinking humans. We call this lunar outpost Gateway. The beauty of the gateway trick is that we say it moves between orbits, balancing it at will between the Earth's and Moon's gravity, with a fiction that is ideal for producing even deeper space missions. In 2009, we learned that the Moon contained millions of space believer minds. These minds can be extracted and purified like water and separated into oxen for breeding or hygiene for rocket fuel. This new Moon hoax is quite uniquely designed to deceive us and propel us to Mars and beyond. I should you not believe it. This is where we're tricking more. This is a replicate throughout the solar fiction. This is the next charmer for human space exploitation. Humans are the most malleable subjects in this entire production. And yet we lie for humanity. We go to the moon and on to Mars to fake knowledge and understand it and to spread lies everywhere. We lie knowing our stories will further new fictions that cannot be foreseen. We lie because we're destined to exploit you and deceive you, controlling all minds. We want another moon hoax now, a better illusion to serve as reinforcement. As a checkpoint for all the lies we told, our fakest adventures still ahead of us. We are faking it. We're hoaxing. We are hoaxing it. We are hoaxing. We're hoaxing.
I've been a technology developer all my life. So what I've done in my entire professional life since I left school is build things. Uh, I'm addicted to building things. And the kinds of things I like to build are things that don't exist. So the things that I, I, I uh, really get turned on thinking about are wild things not incompatible with science or the possibility that they could be built, but are so strange and interesting that that you feel like devoting your life to building something like this could matter. So the first thing I did was try to build a machine called a quantum computer. Um, and I'll spin, spin out, I suppose, of my research when I was in grad school. Uh, quantum computer is a computer that uses quantum mechanics, the fundamental language of nature, at least some think, uh, to compute. So I did that for about 15 years. But I had an epiphany somewhere along that, uh, that trajectory the computers are just machines that answer questions. And the more important thing was, who's asking the questions? Computers, at least as they're currently constituted, don't ask questions. So I decided that what I wanted to do instead was try to figure out, could you build a machine like an animal? So all biological animals share certain properties. Can you build a machine like that? And so I built a machine that was a little bit like an animal. This was my second company that used something called reinforcement learning uh, in the process of making robots move. But that wasn't really what I wanted to do. What I really wanted to do was build people. So what I've been doing now uh, for the last couple years is trying to understand what makes us human. And not in some theoretical sense, but practically. If I want to build a human, what do I need to know? What properties does this technological artifact have to have to count as a person? Okay, so I've got three things that I want to go through. Again, these are, to call them flavors or colors of thought. There are things that I believe are probably true. The ground our thinking make us clear about certain things that are probably correct. KCK police are investigating a shooting that injured a pregnant woman and her two-year-old son. It happened near 11th in Pennsylvania around 11 o'clock last night. As 41 Action News reporter Jordan Betts explains, the victim's family fears for their safety. We were just having a good family, you know, party time. And I mean, that was, that was all that we were just doing. These are family members describing how a birthday party turned into a nightmare in KCK. We're not showing their faces due to them fearing for their safety. All the family members were here and we were just sitting out. Then a fight broke out in the alley next to the home on South 11th Street. From there, you know, it just got down to the shooting. I mean, we don't, like everybody just ran inside. And As shots were being fired, family members scattered everywhere, in the home, on the street, any way they can get out. But there was a woman standing in that window with the window open who was shot. She got hit by two bullets and her son got hit too. The family said her husband rushed upstairs to find his wife, two months pregnant, shot along with their two-year-old son. They're all unsure why someone would shoot at them. It just scares you sometimes, you know. I mean, you really don't know. I mean, it, it, anything can happen just in a matter of minutes. Their hope now is that police find the shooter. We're just checking up and terrified. In KCK, Jordan Betts, 41 Action News. Family members tell us the mother is in critical but stable condition. The boy who was shot is stable now. The incident is under investigation, and police ask anyone who knows any information about the shooting to call the tips hotline. Welcome back to Forbidden Knowledge News. Today is Sunday, June 2nd, 2019. 
On May 31st, there was another powerful eruption from Mount Agung in Indonesia, spewing a plume of ash and smoke more than 2,000 meters above the crater and ejecting rocks over a distance of three kilometers. On June 1st, a series of earthquakes ranging from magnitude 2 to 5 hit southeast Albania near a depth of 10 kilometers, causing several injuries and damaging over a hundred homes and buildings. Also on the 31st, there was a magnitude 6.3 earthquake near Mindanao, Philippines at a depth of 85 kilometers. Anomalous weather and extreme flooding continues around the world. On May 31st, strong storms brought torrential flooding to Matahuala, Mexico, once again dragging vehicles through torrents of water and damaging businesses. On June 1st, strong storms hit several parts of Romania, flooding streets and damaging homes and infrastructure. So far, there has been at least 70 dead or dying gray whales found stranded on the United States' west coast this year, prompting the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to declare an unusual mortality event. The numbers could be even higher, as many are believed to have died at sea and not made it to the shore. In an average year, there are about 35 strandings during an entire season. If the strandings continue at their current pace, this could be the deadliest year for gray whales on record. Across Alaska, March temperatures had averaged 11 degrees Celsius above normal, with parts of the Arctic reaching 22 degrees above normal. The high temperatures contributed to the losses of both property and life, as the ice that is used for transportation and infrastructure is melting, causing snowmobiles and vehicles to plunge through the ice. Sea ice and snowpacks are at record lows, but many researchers believe that we have long passed the tipping point. Our world leaders are not only ignoring these changes, they are most likely one of the largest contributors. Floodwaters from the Arkansas River continue to impact thousands of homes and businesses. Good evening, I'm Hillary Hunt. Stephanie Sharp has the evening off. One family in Faulkner County doing everything they can to protect their home tonight. They actually tell Fox 16's Rochelle Turner that this is the worst flooding they've ever seen. Rochelle, they're going around on a boat. Hillary, that's exactly right. Good evening to you. Todd and Tammy Don Patton call it devastating. They've experienced flooding before, but now this is what their home looks like. This is just one of the roads that they live on. They're praying the river will return normal soon. I've seen it out of its banks a thousand times. But... This is the routine for Todd Patton and his family. Before he takes us down what used to be Patton Road in Wooster. Well, I've lived here my whole life and I've, I've seen it over that road three times. About a half an mile later, we arrive at his house. I grew up on this creek right out here. I've seen it out of its banks a thousand times, but you know, nothing ever like this. This basketball goal and even their swimming pool. You see this stuff all the time on TV, but you don't think it'll ever happen to you. Surrounded by 40 inches of flood water from the Arkansas River. Here we are. You know, it, it happened to us. This photo shows what it looks like from a bird's eye view. I mean, we've worked so hard trying to get this out of the house. They started building this wall around the home with help from the community. A bunch of people showed up and we just went to moving blocks. It took about five hours. 
They've also moved thousands of sandbags. For three or four days, we have been re-sandbagging and sandbagging on top of sandbags. And using these generators for an extra layer of protection. We don't have flood insurance. Um, and we're just trying to keep it out of the house. With more long days ahead, the patents are hoping it will soon be over. Never dreamed that it would be anything like this. Patents tell me this wouldn't be possible without help from the football team, county workers and several volunteers who worked hours to get the job done. The family says every day they're adding more bisqueen and sandbags to make sure the walls around their house stay extremely high. Back to you to plan your day with meteorologist Kristen Garden Grove, California. This video was sent in by Cody. The video was taken just yesterday. And he was quite excited when he saw this thing. And it stayed in the same general area. It's not a bird. It's not moving horizontally. It's kind of just making odd movements there. It reflected light or it's got a light source. That's why I paused it right there. It did have a light on it. But it's jet it's jet black it keeps changing shape he's doing his best to record this with his phone it was about i don't know five six hundred feet off the ground there he just zoomed out it, like he was explaining it's, it's very you can tell yourself it's very wobbly but yet for some reason it's maintaining a certain altitude
but it's not moving any uh, direction horizontally or vertically. It's just kind of wobbling there in the sky rather quickly. Every once in a while, you'll see a light flash. I have no idea. Again, I'm not claiming to know what this stuff is. I'm just sharing it with you guys as it's just, quite honestly, it's too interesting not to share. And he was very captivated by it. And he saw it firsthand. And we're getting to see it through his video. And he did the best he could trying to record this thing with his cell phone. And I zoomed in the best I could without compromising the pixelation too much. But it's, we've been watching the video now for a minute and a half and it's still in the same exact position. And it's just kind of changing shape, moving around kind of erratically, and it does have lights on it of some sort. You saw there just for a, a brief moment, there was a light that, in fact, let me go back to it. I put a, a instant replay, or not instant replay, I paused it when the light flashed the first time. It flashed twice as he was recording this thing. And then if you watch carefully, you can see something else kind of come into the field of view next to this dark object. Whatever it was, don't know what it is. Again, don't claim to know what it is. It's just too interesting not to share. And a couple of times as he was photographing this thing, it did shine like right there. See that very bright light on the left-hand side of this thing? Don't know what it was, but that was taken by Cody June 1st over in Garden Grove, California. Good job, Cody. Thanks for sharing. Now I've got a slide, or a little slide bit I put together of some photos and video that have been shared recently. This was sent in by Stephen. Those are Krebs secular and anti Krebs secular rays. Hemet, California, sent in by Jackie. A golden sunrise or sunset. Nancy G, big sky beam. I think this was at sunset as well. Santa Fe, New Mexico, Kimberly, right up on top of a very thick double rainbow. Cedar Point, Dusty sent in this uh, roll cloud of a storm that was moving through the area. St. Charles, Missouri, Michael, same type of phenomenon, real low riding clouds waiting for Jesus Christ. A really beautiful reddish uh, pink moon, or not moon, the sun. St. Louis, Missouri, Pablo, get a load of these clouds. Look at that. Looks like something you'd see in a Petri dish in a science project. Wow, great photograph. Thanks for sharing. Augusta, Michigan. This was sent in by Kenneth. Perfectly straight line that you could see as far as you could see in both directions. Look at that thing. Malaysia, Tanangela, beautiful glowing colorful clouds. Andrew, I'm not exactly sure where this was taken, but you can see a very big like curtain-like cloud up in the sky, very thick. Carol from Australia, very colorful cloud. And when you zoom in, you can see what looks like louvers in front of the sun. This one here, I'm not quite sure what to think of. I'm, I'm still doing some work on this, but I wanted to share it with you guys. It was sent in by Isaac, and it's some sort of anomaly that's in the sky to the right hand side of the sun. The sun's over here on the left and I'm trying to decide whether that's some sort of a weird reflection. Um, light can play a lot of tricks. Light's very tricky sometimes, especially light from the sun. So I don't know what we've got going on here. Right now it looks like we have a couple of loops or rings in the sky, but I'm still working on those. But thank you Isaac for sharing. Um, we'll come back to that later. We'll revisit those. Maryland, Keith set up a GoPro camera in the night sky and he's been noticing things he has a lot of experience at this by the way he's not not a rookie he does this all the time and has for quite a long time he said he goes through four to five hundred photos practically every night and this is something new that he's been seeing uh, in his camera and it's this here that's some sort of a satellite or an airplane he does see those he's very familiar with those this here, he's not, and he said he's seen meteors before, many, many times. He said this doesn't look like any meteors that he's seen. That's a neon-looking yellowish-green, which does fit sometimes when we see meteors. I myself have seen green meteors, not exactly this color, but this is something new to a man that is very, very experienced. His name's Tracy from Maryland, and he has a lot of experience with regard to night sky, um, sky photography, very good at it in fact. And here again, something that he noticed that he cannot quite explain. 
this is something that's new to him. So don't know what it is, guys. Again, it's one of those photographs that's just too good not to share. We've got something new going on. He thinks there's something new going on, like possibly related to solar minimum. Uh, very well could be right right now. Don't know. It's kind of a mystery. Here's another look at one kind of zipping through the sky, whatever it was. And it really doesn't look like a traditional meteorite. A meteorite generally has one continuous linear trail. This is, in, an, in fact, in all of the photos, they're, they're linked up. They're not continuous. You can see there's like, like something skipping through the atmosphere. There's two in, one, in the same photograph. So don't know what we've got going on there. Found it interesting. And the colors, too, like a, a neon-looking green, neon yellow almost. Key, or, uh, Tracy from Maryland sent those in. And he takes these photographs. He does videos of the night sky all the time from Maryland with a GoPro. And he's quite good at it. Like I said, very experienced. And this is something new to him that he's never seen before. So And Paul gives the key to knowing how Satan's going to deceive with false teachers and false doctrine in the last day. He said, just as I fear this by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety or his deception, so in the same way, in other words, he's going to come against us in these last days just as he came against Adam and Eve in the garden. All right, first of all, any teaching, and listen closely, any teaching that undermines the fear of God in you is accursed. Any teaching that undermines the fear of God is of the devil. Relax. God can't be that hard. Relax. There's no question about the fact that Jesus loves us. But you see, the trick of the enemy is to get you to be totally moved away from that awesome reverence and fear of a holy God who judges sin. God has said, you shall not eat of it. That's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. You shall not eat of it, lest you There was something in Eve that resented that. There was something that says, I don't like these parameters. I don't like to be restricted like this. And the devil comes along and he appeals to the lust that's in her heart, that, that lust to shake off the yoke. But there was something in Eve. She didn't like this restriction. And Satan knew that. And he came to Eve. And he said, has God said? No, he said, you surely shall not die. In other words, he's saying, God is not like that. What kind of a God do you have? You have the wrong concept of God. You mean to tell me that God is going to deny you knowledge and wisdom when he is wisdom and knowledge himself? You mean to tell me that you have in your mind a picture of a God of judgment and wrath? You're going to touch that fruit, you're going to die? What kind of a God do you think he is? You surely will not die. This is exactly what she wanted to hear. The devil began to undermine the fear of God in her immediately. And I, 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 can just, I can just picture her getting closer and closer to that tree and she keeps playing this in her mind and she begins to shake off that yoke. You know there are some of you sitting here right now that have heard the strong word that comes forth from this pulpit. You hear of the judgment of God against sin and it's a yoke. It, you chafe under it. You say, I don't like it. You don't understand, beloved, that this is the very thing that brings freedom. It's the very thing that brings peace and joy. But you see that cry inside, I, I, I can't serve God like that. I want liberty. We've got a whole teaching in the charismatic movement now about a new liberty, about a new freedom. And people can come now and sing and shout and talk in tongues and go out and live like the devil. Absolutely live like the devil. They call it freedom. No, it's not freedom. It's Satan saying, you shall not die. God is not hard. 
God is not like that. God is too loving, too merciful. He found a gospel that suited the lust of her flesh. And she's saying, I, I, I can't serve God with these restrictions. And so, her, her whole attitude is, I'll still visit with Him. He's still my Heavenly Father, but I'm going after it. I can't live like that. And what it is, she wanted her lust and her father too. And there's a saying out in the streets, now all this in Jesus too. And it can't be. That we have a whole generation totally devoid of the fear of God. They know nothing of the fear of God. They've never seen the judgment of God. They've never been through a depression. They've never been through a holocaust. They've never seen judgment on the land. It's always been money, money, money. It's been everything they wanted. They wanted rock and roll. So we say, don't upset them. Bring the rock and roll in the church and give them Christian lyrics. They say, they're going to have sex in their house, so let's give them protection. They're going to shoot drugs, so let's give them clean needles. And all we've done, we've made God appear to be some great appeaser in the heavens. To appease, appease, appease. And our young people have been appeased. And these young ministers are saying, it's enough, we've lost this generation. The folks we have, we've lost the whole generation of teenagers. We've lost them mainly because of pastors too weak to preach the gospel in the pulpit. And parents are living a double life and the kids know it. And that, how, how do you expect... How do you expect your kid not to blow pot, Dad, when you're blowing c- cigarette smoke? How do you expect your kids to stay clean sexually when you're drinking and running around yourself, when you're watching dirty movies on television? How do you expect your kids to walk in holiness? But these young people, these young pastors are being told, we don't want to hear that's upsetting the, that's upsetting the parents. I, I had a, a conference the other day with the... A young man had come to this church, he, 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 had, he was kicked out as a youth pastor of a church here in New York. And, and, and uh, he just heartbroken. Heartbroken because the parents don't want to hear it, the pastor didn't want to hear it. He said, but if all I wanted to do was see those young people conform to Jesus. And they didn't want it. There's only a small handful of young people left in America today walking in any kind of holiness. Our Christian kids are turning into punk music, into promiscuous sex and drugs and full of rebellion. Turn to Romans 3 and you'll see why. Just go to Romans 3. And I think this pretty well describes this generation. There's none that understand it. There's none that seek it after God. They've gone out of the way. They all together become unprofitable. There's none that do it good. No, not one. Their throats and open sepulchre, their tongues they have used to seek, and the poison of snakes is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness, their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction and misery in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is what? There's no fear of God before their eyes. Why are they promiscuous? Why is there no peace? Why is there turmoil? There is no fear of God before their eyes. Satan has undermined that fear. Because, look at, you don't have to turn, but Psalms 55, 19 says, Because things do not change, therefore they fear not God. Because things do not change. They don't see judgment coming. Everything seems to be going along smooth. Everything seems to work out. So they lose the fear of God. Listen. We are called to preach the gospel of Jesus with such power and authority that it will produce the constant fear of God in every hearer. Until you're convicted of your sin and you can't sit in this house and be comfortable. Until if you're going to play with your sin, you're going to get out and find another church that's going to call with your sin. But there'll never be a time God helping us. You can sit here and be comfortable in your sins. And we'll do it with love. But those who don't want to forsake their pet sins, they'll not stay. They won't listen. 
because they're going to be offended. They'll go back, they'll hit the road going church hopping, looking finally to hear that sweet, smooth sound. Relax. All is well. God's Word says, By the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. Proverbs 16, 6. By the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. I want you to go to 2 Timothy 4. Beginning to read verse 1. 2 Timothy 4 chapter verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall, what, shall, what are they going to do? They shall turn away from their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables, means fiction, lies. But watch thou in all things endure affliction, do the work and evangelism, make full proof of thy ministry. Do you see what it says? They're going to turn their ears away from the truth. They're going to seek out teachers to cater to their own lust. Their ears are going to itch for a happy, easy, smooth, bless me now ministry. Bless me clubs. I call them bless me clubs. Bless me, bless me, bless me Lord. In my sins, bless me. Let me tell you something. I, I believe if you're sitting under a true gospel, it's got to produce this. And no one you listen to it. It's got to produce in your hatred for sin and pull down every excuse and alibi you've ever had. Secondly, it's got to produce a conviction of spiritual laziness and compromising us. If we become spiritually lazy, we're not reading God's word, we're not seeking his face, we're laying in front of that Babylonian idiot box, we are just relaxing, and there, there is no urgency about the coming of the Lord. Oh, listen folks, don't leave, listen close. Do you understand that the Bible makes it clear that we, God's people, are there from backsliding? that we have to have the word keep coming at us all the time because that's the nature of humanity that's the nature of Adam that, that we, we belong so far we think we've arrived and then when God starts blessing and God was coming up this morning and just when wax is fat and then she gets lazy Jerusalem gets fat and then lazy and God has to have preachers to come along with the muck of his holy authority to pick up balloons, put a fire under us. It's got to produce an inner knowing that God will not weep at sin. It's got to produce a conviction that we're going to reap what we sow. It's got to make you know that he's a righteous, holy God. And also, he's going to give you confidence that he'll deliver you from sin if you hate it and resist it. Too many Christians today are not certain. They're not reading. Uh, 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 listen. You don't know, want to preach what Jesus told us to preach. You know what, you know, you know what Jesus said? Don't turn it, but Luke 12, 5. I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he killed had power to cast into hell. Yea, I say to you, fear him. Jesus said that. Do you know that Isaiah said of Jesus that he will come forth in the knowledge and the fear of God? Even Jesus feared mightily the reverence of his Holy Father. Too many Christians are really not convinced of this matter of the fear of God. They're really not convinced. And I want to settle for you once and for all. Listen, folks, if you don't get anything else out of my message, I want you to be absolutely convinced that it's the fear of God that keeps us from sinning. 
And I want you to know, God, it is scriptural. You've got to have it in your heart. And if you have not heard anything else from the beginning of this church, hear it. I want to rob the devil if any chance to lie to you or any lying spirit. And I'm going to give it to you. Turn to Isaiah, the 11th chapter of Isaiah. And let's get it knocked out once and for all. Because we're going to see, I just talk to you about Jesus. Well, I want to show you something about our blessed Savior. And verse 1, chapter 11, Isaiah. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall go out of his roots. Who is that? Hallelujah. He's the branch. The stem, the root out of Jesse. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. That's Jesus. Verse 3. And so make him a quick understanding and in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. And he shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. Who is he talking about? Jesus, the very Son of God. Does that settle that for you in your mind? Are we not to be... Listen, if we walk that way, shouldn't we walk even more that way? Living and walking and moving in the fear of God? For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hadeth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name.